my top 10 essentials when it comes to terrain building. Welcome everybody, I am Top Table Steve and welcome to my top 10 terrain building essentials that I always have in and around my desk when I am hobbying. This is a prelude video, it's just a quick taster video of what's to come. As a lot of you will know, there's a new series starting here on Top Table Gaming called Top Table Terrain School. It's going to be a series of videos where I do a lot of builds, show you how to do them, show you what materials I use, give you links to get the materials, and hopefully you guys will build along, either copy it exactly like for like, or just adjust things and make your own builds and, and make it slightly different to what I've done. Uh, but whichever way you do it, if you follow along, I would love to see your progress. But before we go any further, can I just say, if you are not subscribed to the channel and you like this kind of video, you like this kind of content, please do consider clicking the subscribe button. When checking all the analytics and things like that, we do find that there's a very high percentage of people who are not subscribed to the channel compared to people who are subscribed who watch the videos. So it'd be really nice if you guys could subscribe. Um, it would be great. And also, if you click the bell button, you'll be notified when we release videos. Here at Top Table, we cover everything. It's not just terrain building. We cover painting, we cover gaming, we have battle reports, we have reviews, we have interviews, we have live streams. Anything you can think of to do with gaming and hobby, we do it here. So please do consider clicking the subscribe button. As well as that, if you check out all the links below, we do have a lot of social medias. So we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. On Facebook, for me, we have an amazing Facebook group. It's probably the thing I'm most proud about in the channel. If you search Top Table Gaming Community on Facebook, you'll find our group. We'll let you in. And basically, you be surrounded by a lot of people who are in the same mindset it's a really fun really welcoming place to be um, we hardly have to police it at all um, it's just so welcoming and such a great group of people i am very biased but for me it's one of the best groups on facebook go check it out see what you think introduce yourself uh, and i'm sure you'll find yourself at home very very soon so straight into the top 10. Straight off the bat at number one, I have the trusty hobby knife. I have a selection of hobby knives. The main one I use uh, for fine work is an X-Acto knife because the blades are hard wearing, very sharp, um, and it's just, just a really good all round hobby knife. As well as that, I have a Stanley retractable blade. Uh, with I always have fresh blades in my box, uh, just in case I need to. And I use that for more heavy duty things, cutting things that I need to be a little bit rough with. And one tip is always use sharp blades. You're more likely to cut yourself with blunt blades than you are with sharp blades. You still have to be very careful, of course, um, but always have sharp blades. Blunt blades are dangerous. Number two. A selection of glues. Now the main glue we use in terrain building I find would be PVA. It has many uses. Um, you use it for putting your basing material down. You can mix it and dilute it and use it as a scenic cement. If you're not sure what a scenic cement is you'll find out in the series coming soon. But it has a multitude of uses PVA. It's a very versatile glue. Uh, alongside PVA probably what the two other most used glues that I use are a super glue and activator. If I want something sticking very, very quick and to be done there and then, I'll use that. But it can be quite brittle and you can't use it on foam. So when I'm cutting uh, foam and need to stick it together, I use a Gorilla Glue or Gator Glue. They're both the same thing, they're just different brands. And they're great glues, you can use them and they will set a lot quicker uh, than PVA will. So they'll set in about 15 minutes so you can carry on working um, and it doesn't slow you down like it does with PVA. Third on my list is a nice straight edge or set square. Um, now this is not to be sniffed at and you will be amazed when building terrain how often you need a good straight edge. If it's a ruler to boot, bonus. And if it's a set square on top of that, even better. I have a multitude of set squares that have all um, sort of measurements on them um, and they're just great to have around. Uh, right angles and straight edges you will use a lot, more than you'll think. Um, even if it's just to have to make sure something's perfectly upright, um, a set square on the base is what you need. Um, but any straight edge, make sure you've got a straight edge to start with. Steel rule is great. If you can get a steel uh, set square, even better, the cheapest chips on Amazon. Number four is modeling compound. Now, before I was introduced to modeling compound by our friend and friend of the channel, Mr. Luke of Luke's APS and Geek Gaming, uh, I used to go through a ton of polyfiller and uh, like DIY, DIY filler. I'd cover my boards in it and it was all right, it was great, but it, it wasn't the best. It would end up cracking um, and, and splitting and it's, it's white mostly. I'd try and mix paint in it, but it was never worked properly. So when it got chips, when you're gaming on it, you'd see the white through. Modeling compound is 
basically plaster mixed with shredded paper. So the fibers kind of, when you mix it together, the fibers are together, so it doesn't really chip. Uh, you can scratch it, but you can color it as well. And it takes color better than polyfiller because it's got the paper in it. But the fact that it's fibrous um, and the fibers hold everything together, it is solid. Uh, you can't knock it, it's the best thing I've used. It turns a board that's just got pieces of polystyrene stuck all over it into something uh, na looking natural and fantastic. Have a look at some of the videos that I've done on the channel in the past uh, and definitely head over to Luke at Luke's APS um, if you haven't. I mean, where have you been if you haven't? Everyone knows who Luke is, but go and check out his work where he uses modeling compound. Luke also creates his own modeling compound, which he sells on Geek Gaming, and I'll put links below. And that is the stuff that I use mostly. Um, so when you see me using it on the videos, it will be Luke's modeling compound that I'm using. Fifth on my list is styrofoam, polystyrene, any different types of foam you can get. It's always handy to have different types. Uh, styrofoam is great, but if you're just building up kind of volume on a hill or something like that, you don't want to be using your styrofoam that's fairly expensive. You know, just the cheap polystyrene that you get in boxes and packaging uh, is fine for doing that. Or you can go to B&Q and buy in, buy in eight before sheets, massive big sheets of polystyrene. Uh, and it's, it's a few quid, I think it's about a tenner. Um, and you, you can get boards and boards and boards out of it. Have a look at the board builds that I've done in the past, you'll see what I mean. And I'll be using it a lot in the board builds and terrain builds in the series. Uh, so make sure you've got some polystyrene lying around. I have boxes of it all over the place. Um, styrofoam is a foam which is more dense and it's better for use when you are sculpting or building. Uh, it's great for carving into, it's just a great foam. The denser you can get it, the better. Now there is um, like a blue underfloor heating foam, which a lot of people use, which is fine. Uh, there's no problem with it whatsoever. Um, but the green styrofoam that I use is the densest that I've found. But unfortunately you can't buy it in small pieces, not that I've found anywhere yet anyway. Um, you have to buy it in bulk, you have to buy it by the pallet load, which can be quite expensive. But I bought a pallet load of it about six years ago and I'm just coming to the end of it now. I think I've got about three, uh, four by two pieces left. It lasts forever, and I have built a lot. I've, I've built more terrain and boards than than most, uh, and it's lasted me years. So if there's a group of you guys, or you're in a club and you're all hobbyists, um, it might be an idea to put together and get a pallet of this stuff. Again, I'll try and dig out the links and get them below. Any links that I do forget to put up below will be in links for the videos when I'm using them materials anyway. So don't worry. Um, it's whether I can find the links. I'll have to look back. Um, and see where they are because the st styrodur foam is quite difficult to get hold of. Next up we have grits and sands. Grits and sands and pebbles and everything like that is really really handy to have. Uh, I've got some of them really useful boxes, the little square ones and all different grades. So I've got like really fine sand uh, going up to ballast which you use on, on uh, model railways and then going up to the pebbles that you'd use like in a fish tank or an aquarium or something like that all different sizes and then i also i use slate a lot as well so the the slate you know that you get for decorating around your, your garden and garden centers uh, the broken slate i use that a lot that's really cool really effective and it's quite light slate as well so that's good for use of that always have some of that around if you've got a board that's just kind of pretty basic there's not much on it it's nice to have just to sprinkle some of your grits and your sands and it just adds a bit of texture and a bit of detail it's a fantastic product and it's dead easy to get hold of so make sure you've got some of that then we move on to our, our wood type materials. So balsa wood is the obvious modeling uh, material as far as wood goes. It's great, it's versatile, it's really easy to use, it's really soft. Um, that is, a, that is a plus and a minus. It's so soft, if you're using it for war gaming um, and it's getting handled a lot or knocked about, it can break very easy. But if you're using it for dioramas, it's the best thing you can do. Failing that, Coffee stirrers. Coffee stirrers are great. Amazon sells big bags of them for a couple of quid. Um, don't steal them from McDonald's. It's not cool. <laughs> but I'm only joking, you do what you want. Uh, but yeah, Amazon sell them really cheap. I got a big bag of them uh, a couple of years ago and nowhere near got through it. It wasn't expensive. They're very, very cheap. But they are a great material to have around. It's great for building uh, sturdy subs, uh, substructures. Um, coffee stirrers with a hot glue gun can build anything and it's pretty solid. For anything you'd need for wargaming, uh, you'd be fine with that. Next up, we're on to flocks and static grasses. It's always good to have a good collection. Uh, Woodland Scenics do the shakers, uh, but they can be quite expensive if you are trying to start out and you've not got any colours and you're trying to get a, a, a few colours in your uh, arsenal. 
what I would suggest is going on eBay and they do like sample bags and just get a few of them. Uh, and whilst you're sort of finding your feet with flocks, get a few different shades of green, a few different shades of browns, some blacks, some like ready ochres, um, and you'll have enough there to get on with. Anything I'm doing, that will be plenty. And you can buy them for like a couple of quid a bag rather than spending 17 quid on a shaker, um, which you probably, if you get more into terrain, you'll want them, but they'll last you a long time. A shaker will, could last you, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 boards worth. Um, you don't need that straight off the bat. You just need a little bit to get used to using it, sort of work out how it, how it works and how it functions and how it responds to glues and things like that, and you'll be fine. But uh, flocks and static grasses, get as many colors as you can or you can afford uh, and go from there. Don't think you need every color in the rainbow to start with, because you don't. Just a couple of greens, a couple of browns, and you're golden. Number nine, old paintbrushes. So old, I have drawers and drawers and drawers of old paintbrushes. Anything from um, about two inch brush, you know, I'm talking like brushes that you use to paint your walls at home. Uh, you can get them really cheap in DIY stores. Um, I've got tons of those and also uh, artist sets from like pound shops where you get some really nice, you get like flathead brushes, round head brushes, tapered head brushes, cutting in brushes. Um, just get as many as you can because they will, they're invaluable when it comes to making terrain. You don't want to be using your nice brushes to dry brush a load of sand or a load of rocks. Uh, you will go through brushes like nobody's business. Make sure you've got a load of old brushes uh, and keep them clean. Don't, don't, I know we're using them, like I say, you know, as kind of throwaways, but you want to keep them as long as possible and you don't want to be buying new brushes every time. So keep them clean when you finish with them, have a pot of water, clean them out, um, and every now and again, give them a, a wash with some brush soap. But that's far more economical using a 20 pence DIY brush than using a six pound brush that you got from GW. And last but not least, sticking with the paint theme, uh, you want a load of pound shop paint. When I say pound shop paint, I mean like hobby paint. It comes in like sort of toothpaste tube th things, They're normally about 50 pence to a pound a tube. Uh, you get all your basic colors, a lot of um, greens, browns, ochres, creams, Creams are, you can never have too many creams. Go like from white to off-whites, uh, ivories, uh, all things like that, really light, light browns. Uh, when it comes to painting rocks, I mean, get some greys, but when it comes to painting rocks, creams are what you want. Rocks are full of different colours, um, but we'll go into that in some of the videos where we're using different colour washes and things like that to, to bring out a tone and make rocks look more realistic. Um, but yeah, that's my top 10 materials that I have in my arsenal for making terrain. I will be using all of that plus a lot more uh, in the videos coming. But if you have that as a base, uh, you will never be far short of being able to create amazing terrain pieces. Um, I'm gonna go away now and get the first video done in Top Table Terrain School. Please do get on board with this. Get involved in the chat. Let me know below what kind of terrain features you'd like me to build. Um, we're gonna start off with the basic stuff, um, but I don't wanna just start off with basic and do basic, 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 moving up. I'm gonna sort of jump from one end to the other. So I'm gonna try and have a tier system. So like tier one will be like the easy stuff. Tier two will be intermediate stuff. Tier three will be more involved uh, with making buildings and things like that. And I'll just, I'll, I'll have that kind of system on the videos. We won't necessarily do a load of tier one, then tier two, then tier three. We might go one, three, two, three, one, one, that kind of thing, uh, just to keep everybody interested. Uh, and I want some tips off you guys. Uh, I'm here to learn as well. Uh, everything that I do on these videos is self-taught from watching other YouTube videos, uh, watching people like Luke, uh, Luke Towen, uh, all people like that. It's, they're amazing and very talented. Um, and I've picked up a few little tips and tricks on my own on the way. Hopefully I can share them with you and we can share uh, a lot of hours of fun and hobby together. Uh, I look forward to doing this now. Uh, I've, I've really got a fire in my belly for it. So guys, I'm gonna go make sure you stay safe, keep washing your hands, and I'll see you in the first top table terrain school. Don't be late for class. <laughs>